So first thing we do in the morning, Juicy lets us know when it's time to get out. And he starts hollering about, I don't know, 545. So we have to come get him. And we let him and David free range. They don't seem to have problems with the hawks or cats or anything else. But these little fluffy buggers are like sugar to every wild predator in the land. So they're getting bigger though. They're changing a lot. Their feathers are starting to change. They're getting uh, a little more aggressive. They fight with one another now. So I think that in another couple weeks, they're going to be tough enough to come out and free range. But for now, I keep them hemmed up. Keep them safe. Give them some grass and stuff to play with in here. But I keep them safe and Roxanne stays with them because, you know, they're going to be food. So they get their food in here and that's the way it goes with them. But we're going to be moving them to their other bigger coop. We just had some problems why we couldn't move them in right away. But they're doing good. Everyone's changing. We got one crooked beaker. Everyone was concerned about the crooked beak chicken breeding, said that'll pass that gene on. We got one crooked beaker, so it is what it is. Now this is where it gets tricky to come feed the kittens in the morning, because as soon as I crack this door, 17 cats want to run out. It's good because they're hungry, so if you clang two cans, they usually come back. But we are right by the road here, so I don't like it. I like to slowly crack the door, and I gotta punch kittens in the face first thing in the morning. You're not punch that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We made it out this morning. We like to get a walk every once in a while around our property to get exercise and to pretty much check out what's going on. What's growing? What bananas do we have? What trees fell in the night? Maybe what kind of little animal footprints? Basically, we just really enjoy getting out after living on the boat forever. And we were pretty much, we had to set up a whole dinghy and do all that just to get walking on land. So we really don't take it for granted. Yeah, you were pretty confined heavily on the boat. So this is where we have our morning work meetings. You know, we decide what's going to actually transpire through the day. And we have a little bit of tranquility, a little bit of peace before all the ditches got to get dug, all the insanity that ensues when you don't know what you're doing and you decide to build a whole farm and house. <laughs> so this is a good little warm up to the day. Usually we walk down here with our coffee. You know, it's about a, I don't know, a mile of walking by the time it's all said and done. Good little time to strategize. You know, she gives me my pointer, says this is what you're going to be doing today, I think. Make sure you smile for the camera, boy. I don't be do getting, not. She said, don't be getting huffy puffy. You always smile. But yeah, it's great. And you know, there's always a million little discoveries to make. If it's raining, you know, we want to come down here and see what's flooding really bad. Um, if it's not raining at all, we want to see what's really drying up. We want to see what animals. And then Kristen always has this fantasy that, you know, one day we're going to walk down here and someone's going to have left a stray horse, a little <laughs> stray pony that we're going to be able to adopt. A baby, so, a baby. Yeah, well, just a little baby stray pony is going to be lost left. lost and we have to take them in. Deep into the property. So this is, you know, a good way to start your day. And it's one of the benefits of having, having a property. You know, it's secluded, it's calm. It's good to go take note of everything that's going on. See, I see here, uh, this, this banana tree fell down. It's slippery here, it looks pretty muddy. Give that day, give that day, mommy.
So this is the best swimming hole in the property. I don't know if it's the best. It might be the second best. It's the most calm. It's easy. It's flat in here. And it actually is about like eight feet deep over there in that corner. And I've swam in here and I've seen a lot of shrimps and like little freshwater crabs and stuff. But I did find a claw of like a giant, well, I don't know if it was giant, but it seemed like a pretty big claw. And everyone, all the locals say there's like giant river shrimp in here. So if you're interested in that and you would love to see me jump in and try to tackle one down and catch and cook one, let me know in the comments below. I'm eager to try to get in and see if I can find one. The water's been really murky for the past couple weeks, but now it's kind of cleared out a little bit. So I might go on the hunt and see if I can find one one of these days. Will you eat one, Kristen? I'll will taste you, it. Will you eat a shrimp out of this river? I'll taste it. It's a problem with a river is you never know what runs downhill into this water. So it seems pretty clear, but you know, you don't want to eat no dookie shrimp, that's for sure. See, this is a different strain of banana, we believe, because the flower pods that come down are massive and huge. I mean, this banana stack is going to be Guinness Book of World Records for sure. We asked y'all in a, pr a prior episode, like... Oh, shoot, there's another one. We're going to have bananas for more than just days. We're going to have bananas for days. But before we asked, like, what were the different types of bananas in Puerto Rico, and everyone just kept telling us the other ones were plantains, give us some credit. Give the gringos a little credit. We know the difference between plantains and bananas. But some bananas come out real fat and short and some are kind of like longer and skinnier and more square. So if this is a different strain of banana, I got to know because it don't do like the other ones. I mean, that's 20 something inches long. So it's Thanksgiving week for us. When this video goes up, I'm sure you guys already had your Thanksgiving. I hope everyone had a great time, but it's Thanksgiving week for us. So all the workers around are pretty much done working for this week. So our last week, if you didn't see last week's video, we've been digging, or I shouldn't say we, he's been digging a big trench because we're planning on doing a footer for a wall a gate for the front of our property and it's coming out good but we have to wait on that project because we need to wait for the truck to pour all the cement yeah we're basically waiting on everybody and we both do dig i dig in the dirt but she digs in the youtube stuff and she does all the youtube so if you're watching this and you're enjoying it and you're saying this guy does all the work and she don't do nothing what you're watching is what she does she <laughs> completely gets all well, the money sometimes coming sometimes i work on the camera but she does work on the camera up. too but it's it's so y'all don't don't pick on don't pick on my fiance here she does the hard work that i could do trust me i could not i can swing a pick all day long but looking at a computer screen for eight hours it could never be me but either way today since we are not able to move forward with that project we're going to catch up on some old projects that kind of came about as life has gone on So today in the morning routine, you may have wondered why my chickens and all my grandchickens were still in their temporary shelter. Grand chickens? grand chickens, that's what they are. They were still in their temporary housing and not in this big chicken mansion that we slaved and made you guys go through three videos to finish. Uh, and that's because the roof, as it dried unforeseen, shrunk together and left gaps in the roof. So I was like, I don't want it to rain on them at night. I know that this one's dry at least. So I gotta go in there and get a quick fix for making this dry. And then once they're dried and they're moved in, I gotta fill a couple little gaps at the bottom and then that's it, they can move in.
So my plan for when the water goes to the gaps in the bamboo to not rain down on my sweet chickens, I'm gonna just put a thin PVC, I guess it'd be a ceiling in there, and that'll keep the water off of them and it'll keep it all a little bit uh, rodent proof, hopefully as well. I think I'm gonna box in the corners with cages just to keep any rats out of here. The only predators we really have in Puerto Rico are hawks. So obviously a hawk can't get in here and then um, an owl, hawks and owls, and then a big rat, I would think, could be a predator, but I think the chickens would tear them up pretty bad if a big rat were to go in here. Mongoose. And, and then we have mongooses, but mongooses are diurnal, and at right now, the chicken coop's pretty close to the house. They say that mongoose, mongoose, whatever they are, are like terrified of humans, so they stay pretty much away from you, and then they don't hunt at night. They sleep at night like everything else, so... That's one good thing we got going for us. And then obviously snakes, they say we have boas and stuff like that too, but I've never seen a snake here in the three or four months that we've been here. So I don't think snakes is a big problem. So luckily we don't have too many predators, but anyway, long story short, that's my plan for getting this done. All right, so the roof was already pretty waterproof, but now it's gonna definitely keep those drip drops off of their heads. They're chickens. I think a little bit of water probably wouldn't kill them anyhow, especially now that the chicks are getting a little bit older. I think that they could handle it, but I want it to be comfortable in there. I don't want mold or anything like that to be a problem, so I want to keep it completely dry. It's maybe something that I have to continue to do with sealants and things like that as life goes on, but for now, it's good. Now, because we had to move this back a little bit in order to move our trailer back, to build our wall. I have a few little gaps in the floor which I'm going to backfill, put some rocks in around, and then we'll be able to move them in. I don't want the chicken just coming into a bear chicken run. I want to add a little something to make it more fun for them so they can have an overall great time. That's a big plant you got there. Well, gotta get big plants when you have a big love for your chick. So the reason I like to pull up these tall grass lumps, it's a twofer. One, I get to landscape 
don't mind him. One, I get to landscape and keep the grass down a little bit, and also up against this wire, it kind of gives them a, a kind of thing, it kind of breaks them up for the hawks. Son, nothing's happening to you. It breaks up the vision for the hawks and it gives them somewhere to kind of hide still. Like when the iguanas walk by, that really stresses them out for some reason. I guess iguanas could probably eat baby chicks. But I put a little bit of vegetation in there just to give them something to hide in. A little more of a natural habitat, not just regular old dirt. It's a long time coming, but we're putting the chickens in to their new mansion and they're gonna love it, I hope. It seems awfully big right now because they're only baby chicks, but they are getting pretty big pretty fast, so soon they'll pluff up. Pluff up? That's not a word. <laughs> fluff up. I'm really excited to tell you that some of our seeds from the previous video when we planted them germinated. Obviously, we got a really strong row right here, and these are, what were these? Squash, right? Uh, yeah, cabeza pumpkins. Like Puerto Rican squash. Yeah, big, the big pumpkin looking squash. And we got one cucumber plant so far. But these are so big and there are too many in this one, so we're going to have to replant those. So stay tuned for another episode when we get into that, or maybe we won't film it. I don't know what's well, going to happen. All we got, oh Sorry. goodness, it's fine. All we got is one cucumber plant. These still have days to go before they germinate, though. It hasn't been that long, so we still got time here. But this thing has been really helpful for us because we are able to... You can put this down now. <laughs> We're able to spray them with water, put the lid on, nothing eats them, no caterpillars get to them, no birds get to them, and you just feel them in there to see if they're moist. So we did a lot better with this. Well, yeah, we got way more plants than we did with our additional pumpkins. And then obviously too, we just used the seed packets from Home Depot and the further reading I found is those aren't like outrageously good seeds. The people at the greenhouse factory, they told me that they have some lettuces that have like 90% germination rate. So I might have to snag some of those up, but I don't know if those are genetically modified. You know, we're trying to be natural out here, so it looks like we're gonna be eating a lot of pumpkins because we can't grow much else. I have either turnips, no, what do I have? You have radishes. I, I either have radishes or, or beets. beets. One or the other is coming in. I got a good amount of those too. So, you know, between pumpkins and beets, please tag me in a nice recipe that you can make with those and silky chicken eggs, because that's about all I'm gonna be able to have. And bananas too. Bananas, plantain, so you know, we're, we're getting there, slowly but surely, but yeah, this lavish, uh, whatever I thought I was gonna have, peppers, onions, we're potatoes, tomatoes, we just started. crams, yams. And in a few years, guys, we're gonna have a whole garden that's gonna feed us. We didn't wanna plant them anywhere and then have to rip them up because what we've noticed is with these bigger construction projects, they run all over your land more than you would think. You know, we already trapped our trailer behind the wall. We already had to stomp on my spinach plant to move the chicken coop too many times so and you can't plant these too close to the other pumpkins because there's a cross pollination issue and then that's a whole big problem as well so you know we're learning trials and tribulations but that's what that's what this chapter of our life is all about but we're super excited this week we're slowing down we're gonna have a great thanksgiving matt got me turkey legs so we're gonna be cooking turkey legs and we're just having a land Thanksgiving, just the two of us. We wish we could go see our families, but we're going for Christmas time, so we decided not to go both times. Yeah, right? for sure. But I, yeah, I mean, we could have hopped on a flight, but we're really not at that jet setting level yet. So we already have to go back for Christmas, then we gotta get married next year. So it is what it is. Still love y'all, family members. Happy Thanksgiving. Mom, I wish I was with you. Dad, I wish I was there to see you and, you know, get drunker than hell and do some push ups. So 
They've already had their Thanksgiving. So oh, yeah. By the okay. time they see this. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you check out our Patreon if you want to see any real-time updates. And we'll see you guys next week. Anything else? That's it. Bye.